generative adversarial networks so these generative adversarial networks in short called as gans that is g a and n gans actually these are developed by a researcher called an goodfellow okay and along with his co researchers he developed the networks called generative adversarial networks so generally these gans are a great uh, are the great advancements in the field of machine learning so why these are great advancements we'll uh, see uh, shortly and these gans are having wide range of applications okay so one popular application of gans generate or advert uh, i'm sorry so one popular application of gans is uh, gan in the sense generative adversarial networks one popular application of gans is face generation so if you see here there is a website called this person does not exist.com so after completing the session you go and visit this website so where this website will be having some faces here so if you see the faces here the first face the second face third face and fourth face these faces look like as if they were the real faces of uh, the human beings but actually the images which we are seeing on the screen are of the people who actually do not exist that is these people do not exist but these faces are generated by gans all these faces are generated by generative adversarial networks okay so we can observe how great these and how uh, detailed are the expressions of these uh, people that is uh, this is an expression of a child uh, so this is an expression of a girl and this is an expression of a boy so how detailed and how great these expressions are so all these things are uh, formed by the gans okay so let us now first have a basic idea a general idea of what gans are okay so gans consists of a pair of neural networks which fight with each other or which fight against each other okay so why we are telling that they are going to fight against each other and all you will be understanding as our discussion progresses okay so if you see we have two types of networks here one network is called generator network and the second network is called discriminator network okay so the generative adversarial networks consists of two networks the first one is generator network and the second one is discriminator network so first of all we'll see an analogy to understand or to better understand the concept of gan and later we'll go into the actual technical definition and actual definition of gans so before that we look after a, an analogy okay so if you see here the gans behave like a counter feeder okay so if you see here this is our uh, let us say a counter feeder or you can think him as a thief and you can think him as a cop okay so what does this counter feeder or what does this thief will do he will constantly try to make some paintings okay so here we are uh, trying to tell about the concept of generating a painting okay so what this generator is going to do is he will generate some form of paintings okay and he will give these paintings to the discriminator now the discriminator analyzes this paintings and this discriminator will say whether that painting is from original painting or it is from a fake painting okay so this is very important thing to remember the generator generates some paintings okay this is just an analogy okay i'm not still discussing about gans but i am just telling about uh, how we can understand more about gans okay so let us say there is some a particular person or a generator who is going to generate some painting okay so this painting this generator tries to construct this painting which is exactly equal to the original painting okay so in this way he will try to construct these paintings in such a way that these are 
original pendings that is these cannot be discriminated so but uh, what is the job of this discriminator the job of this discriminator is to identify whether these paintings are generated by the generator or whether these paintings are originally from the original images okay so this is how the generator and discriminator are going to work okay so here this counterfeiter or let us say we, we assume that this person is a thief so this person is called a generator network and this person who is going to analyze all the generated paintings is called a discriminator network okay so if you see here initially the generator has generated a particular image okay now this image is analyzed by the discriminator so the discriminator says that this is a fake image obviously this is a fake image it is easy for him so for the second time now the generator tries to improve his paintings okay now from previous painting to present painting he has improved this painting okay so even though he has improved this painting now the discriminator can easily find out that this is not the original painting this is a fake painting so that is the reason he is saying again no okay next for the third time he even improves the generator even improves his painting and again it, it, he passes it through the discriminator now, now the discriminator analyzes this painting and again he say that it is no okay so now for the last time he is even more improving his painting skills that is that generator is even more improving his painting skills and again he pass this through the discriminator network and again he will say no so like this he will be keeping on improving uh, his painting skills so that this generator wants to improve his painting skills in such a way that the the picture which he has generated is identical to the picture in the original image okay because the generators uh, 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 the generator what he wanted to do is he wanted to fool this discriminator that is he don't want he this discriminator to correctly classify whether the image which the discriminator is analyzing is a fake image or a uh, original image okay guys meek ardhamaindha ee point ardhamaindha meek ikkada nenu cheptunnadu point meek ardhamaindi kada so generator network em chestundante konni images a generate chestundi discriminator pan enti ante a a generator generate chesina images avi original data set lo nunchi ochchaya ledante generator danni produce chesadani find out cheyadame discriminator taluka main aim ikkada okay now so in the last now the generator at somehow try to generate an image which is very much identical to the original image so the generator has improved his skill to construct a new a, an image which is identical to the original image in the original image data set okay so now the discriminator said that this is a not a fake image so here the discriminator failed okay so what is the work of generator the work of generator is to make discriminator fail or the work of generator is to fool the discriminator that this image has been taken from the original image data set but not generated by the generator but what is the actual thing this is generated by the generator okay so if the discriminator is going to fail or if the discriminator fails to say that this image has been generated by the generator then the generator is successful and the discriminator is not successful he is unsuccessful okay no so if you see here this is our generator network and this is our discriminator network so these are our real images original images these are our original images okay so when we give these original images to this discriminator the discriminator network will say that this is an original image that is this is taken from the set of original images okay so and when uh, the discriminator is given this particular image which is generated by the generator network the discriminator now says that this is not an original image this is fake image then the discriminator is very good at analyzing this one okay so if the discriminator uh, says that this is a original image that is this is not a fake image then the discriminator is not doing his work accordingly okay then the generator will be uh, successful that generator succeeded if the discriminator said that this image is from the original data set but not from the generator images okay 
so with this we have completed the basic uh, understanding of uh, 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 generative adversarial networks okay so we shall now uh, uh, look after the actual explanation of the generative adversarial networks okay so now uh, let us discuss about uh, more in detail about the generative adversarial networks okay the generative adversarial networks so in generative adversarial networks first of all we will be dealing about what is generative and then we'll discuss what is adversarial and then we we'll discuss what are networks so coming to the first part g which is nothing but generative so what is generative means here we are going to generate some probability distribution okay so we are going to generate some probability distribution which actually becomes closer to original data and this data we wanted to approximate so what is the meaning of this one means we will try to generate a probability distribution and this probability distribution comes very close to our original data that we want to approximate that is uh, we'll discuss about this complete uh, generative kind of factor in the coming discussion okay so if you don't understand don't get worried but just uh, uh listen what actually generative means that is we are going to generate a probability distribution which comes very close to the original data okay now coming to the second one adversarial so in adversarial actually adversarial means having a conflict okay or uh, somewhat uh, uh, op which are opposite to each other okay so here as we already discussed in generative adversarial networks we have uh, two networks the first network is the discriminator network and the second network is the generator network so what these two networks will do they will fight against each other that is one network uh, the discriminator uh, the generator network wants to fool the discriminator network but the discriminator network tries to not to be fooled by the generator network so like this uh, these two networks that is the discriminator network and the generator network uh, will fight against each other to learn a particular probability distribution function okay so the last thing is networks network is nothing but uh, so here we are uh, uh, here we are going to refer these networks as deep neural networks and one example of these deep neural networks is convolution neural networks okay so we shall now see the uh, definition of gan so what is the definition of gan so gans are actually the deep neural network architectures which are comprised of two neural networks and these two neural networks compete against each other isn't it okay so now after learning the basic terms of what are uh, generative adversarial networks now we can actually understand what gans are all about okay so basically gans are simple neural networks gans are simple neural networks which are trained in adversarial manner okay we just now discussed what is adversarial manner so these gans are neural networks which are trained in adversarial manner to generate new data so these networks what they will do they they generate new data so which mimics the some distribution okay which mimics some probability distributions okay so even if you do not understand this don't get confused i'll make it clear uh, with the help of a pictorial representation okay so this is actually our the main objective of gan what is this the main objective of gan is that uh, these gans are uh, are trained in adversarial adversarial manner and they try to generate a new data which mimic some probability distribution okay now so before discussing about uh, 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 in detail about gans actually in machine learning we have two classes of models okay the first model is discriminative model and the second model is generative model so we'll first look after what is discriminative model and what is generative model okay now coming to the discriminative model so what is discriminative model so this discriminative model the name itself uh, specifies that it discriminates between two different classes of data so we have class c1 and then we have class c2 okay so this model discriminates between these two classes that is class c1 and class c2 okay so actually let us take an example the classification of facial data 
Now we want our network to detect whether this facial data is fake or not fake. That is whether these images are from the original image uh, set or whether they are generated from the uh, uh, noisy data. Okay, so this is actually we wanted to do this our network to uh, tell whether the images are fake or not fake. So this is actually done through the discriminative model. So we are uh, uh, we are going to uh, differentiate between two classes that is fake or not fake. So this uh, output of uh, the discriminative model. So this uh, 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 facial recognition, the facial data, the output will be zero. Okay. So if it is a fake face, okay, if it detects that it is a fake face, the output is zero, and the output will be one if it is not a fake face. That is, if it is a real face, the output is one. And output is zero if it is a fake face. Okay, so all these discriminative models actually they fall into the category of classification problems. Okay, now coming to the uh, second kind of model, which is nothing but the generative model. So here we actually have a definition. Okay, so at the first uh, 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 glance, we, we you you may not understand this one, but as the discussion continues, uh, I'll uh, try my best to. Uh, uh, make it uh, clear okay so here a generative model which is represented by capital g okay we are representing the generative model as capital g now this generative model has to be trained on x capital x which is actually our training data okay so now our generative model should be trained on capital x which is nothing but our training data okay now this training data okay is a sample from the true distribution d okay so don't get confused if you do not understand first of all i'll explain this definition and later i'll explain you with the help of pictorial representation okay so this x has been sampled from the true distribution d okay so a generative model g which has to be trained on x and this x is sampled from true distribution d is the one which given some standard random distribution z now we have a standard random distribution capital z and this capital z produces again a distribution d dash okay and this d dash should be as close as possible to this d according to some closeness metric and mathematically we represent this as that is z small z sample from capital z where capital z is the standard random distribution and this maps to the sample z of z which is sampled from d dash so what is small z what is capital z what is z of z and what is d dash what is d and what is x all we shall see now okay okay so if you see this is actually the pictorial representation of the definition which we have discussed right now okay so here we represent the original distribution this one we represent the original distribution with the help of a circle okay and this original distribution is represented with the help of capital d okay this is our original distribution now all the points which are inside this capital d see these points all these points okay which i am now telling about all these points so all these points inside d are represent with the help of capital x okay so what is this capital x so if you take this uh, famous uh, mnist data set that is m n i s t okay if you are not aware that just look after in the internet what is the uh, m n i s t okay so this is a popular data set a benchmarking data set for the machine learning algorithms okay so here okay again coming to our discussion so all the data points in this uh, original distribution d which are represented by x okay so this x we can take from this mnist data set okay so or we can say uh, these points these points are the mnist data set which are represented by x and this data set forms the distribution d okay so i just wanted to uh, make it uh, more clear again and again so because this is very important in understanding the definition so here the original distribution is represented as d okay if you see here i'm clearing this one also okay so we have original or true distribution d this is our original distribution d okay so here in the picture this is our this complete circle which is uh, now uh, being uh, 
circle this is our original distribution d okay now all the data points inside d so which are dotted like this okay all the data points inside this d are represented by x so here this one the training data so all the points inside d are represented with capital x okay so now these data set that is this one this data set this data set forms the distribution d so this data set forms a distribution called capital d okay so where this distribution is actually unknown okay this uh, this distribution is actually unknown to us okay so these points these points actually form a distribution d and presently this distribution is unknown for us which means we have our mnist data set or mnist numbers okay this is this what we told this this is our mnist data set okay so we have this mnist data set numbers but we cannot tell what sort of distribution this mnist data numbers are forming okay at present we cannot tell what 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 sort of distribution this mnist data numbers are forming so that is the reason we represent the distribution of mnist samples as d okay because we do not know the present distribution of this particular data number so for this reason we represent our distribution as d okay now so what actually we want from our generator okay so this is our generator okay so what actually we want uh, from generator so uh, do you remember now we are discussing about the second model called generative model we already discussed about discriminative model okay so to explain what is the generative model all these things we are now discussing so now uh, what we actually want from our generator is to approximate this d okay so uh, what what we wanted to do this to approximate this d value okay this one to approximate this d value and we wanted to come as close as possible to d okay so we want this generator network this generator network to approximate this d and we want to come closer as close as possible to this d okay so actually this is what uh, written in the definition so if if you see here in the definition a generative model g which is to be trained on x which is the training data and this x is sampled from the true distribution d is one given some standard random distribution z so here our standard random distribution is this one so z which is a uh, uh, i'm bordered with some uh, regular shape this one so this is our standard random distribution z okay so here if you see here this x this one this x is basically sampled from the true distribution d okay so this is x right which is what we are discussing this is sampled from the true distribution d okay and now our model has to be trained on this particular data set okay x our model has to be trained on this particular data set so that it produces some another distribution which is close to this distribution d okay we wanted to produce now another distribution which is close to this distribution d okay so now how can we do that how can we do that so we do this by okay i am again coming to this one given some standard random distribution z okay this standard random distribution produces a distribution d dash okay so if you see here so this one is our standard random distribution z okay and when it is passed through the generator network okay so and when we pass this through the generator network now the target of this generator network what is our target the target of this generator network is to convert this random data this one z convert this random data z into d dash that is converting this random data z into d dash okay i'm clearing this one so what is what is the target of this generator network it wants to convert this standard random distribution to d dash okay random distribution z into d dash and now when it produced 
this d dash this d dash should be as close as possible to this t okay so this d dash should be as close as possible to d in terms of some metric okay so here this generator network g is generally a feed forward network or it could be a deep neural network or it could be a cnn okay so the target of g the target of this g generator network is to convert this z into d dash okay so the target of this generator network is to convert this z into d dash and here what is z z is the random distribution okay here z is the random distribution and this z is converted to distribution d dash which is as close as possible to this d okay so this is our original distribution okay do remember this is our original distribution so one thing to note here is that the samples inside this random distribution z if you see these are in the green color the samples inside the random distribution z are represented by small z so small z which is sampled from the capital z so samples inside this random distribution z are represented by small z so that is the reason we write small z which is sampled from capital z so when these uh, samples that is which are represented by the small z okay inside this random distribution are fed to this generator model g they are now transformed into g of z okay so if you see here when the small z values are fed to the generator network now they are transformed by this generator network into g of z okay so all these uh, g of z random variables now which are produced from the generator network all these g of z random variables now these are present in d dash right so we got d dash so these are all represented by g of z so these are all represented by g of z so this g of z samples are all present in the d dash okay so this g of z are the samples taken from the d dash that is g of z are present in the d dash distribution okay do remember so that is why we are going to write this uh, this one so that is uh, why we are going to write g of z is sampled from d dash okay so here uh, one important point to note is that all the samples which are represented these samples all the samples which are represented by g of z are the generative samples which are not present in d okay this is a very important point to remember so these are all the generative samples these are actually not present in d okay so this uh, uh, d dash is different from this d that is this g of z are also the mnast samples but these samples are not present in the existing data set okay do remember this is what we told okay so this is our original true distribution okay now we got this distribution d dash from the generator network okay so now this g of z is also mnast data but it is not actually uh, uh, it is not actually uh, the uh, original mnast data samples okay so these samples are not present in the already existing mnast data samples which is represented by x okay so this g of z this are uh, these values are basically generative samples which are not present in d okay but if you see this g of z follows the same distribution as that of d so what is our objective see the objective we wanted to bring d to as close as possible to d dash so that is g of z this one g of z follows the same distribution as that of d so using this um, approximate probability distribution d dash which is close to d so we you now try to bring this d dash which is approximately equal to d so this is very important so we try to approximate these uh, probability distributions d dash is equal to d so this is actually our basic concept of generative models okay